all that good stuff and more, let us say hello to the one and only Mike Goldberg. Hello, Mike. How are you? I am very good, my friend. How are you? I'm doing great. Great to see you. Uh, you're, 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 you're in the office, it looks like. You've got the, the, yeah, the memorabilia, yeah. the mementos, so to speak. December 21st, 1997. Is this a date that is just kind of like engraved in your brain? Oh, of course. Of course. And not just because of the UFC and it now being 25 years. It, it's, it's crazy, Ariel. And um, my niece's birthday is today she's 21 years old so we call each other ufc buddy (laughs) and i miss you dad my father passed away five years to today wow um and by far he was my biggest fan so love dad dad's up in heaven he was he was my biggest fan no question you my friend have always been my biggest and most loyal supporter i've said that to you many times i will say it to you again because This seems like the right time to say it. Um, So it is. It's a very special day in a lot of ways. And today's a celebration day for my niece, for dad, and of course, for 25 years since I was in Shin Yokohama, Japan. Wow. Uh, And thank you for that. I appreciate it. So could could you paint the picture for us? Uh, Where were you when you got the call? How long? Because I I think you were replacing Bruce Beck, who is still a fixture here in the New York area, working for uh, Channel 4 NBC. Like, what were the circumstances surrounding you getting the call to go to Japan to, to call your first UFC? Well, the best news is that Bruce is still there. But one of the greatest hirings in my life was NBC hiring Bruce Beck. <laughs> so he could no longer freeze. Is that why? Cereal. Is that why? Is it? Yeah. Wow. That's exactly what it was. Because at the time, and as you know, being in the, you know, the metro area, Bruce had a role on MSG that I had at Sports Channel Chicago. We were play-by-play for maybe the smaller college basketball games. We were sidelines for the Knicks or the Bulls in my case. So we we were somewhat virtually identical, if you will. Uh And then when he was no longer able to freelance, I was at ESPN by then, Bruce Connell. Of course, Brucey, may he rest in peace, my dearest friend in the world. Um, Brucey said, and you've heard it before, Goldie, 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 I I got a gig for you. It's in Japan. You got to take a jiu-jitsu class. I heard gig. I heard Japan. Um, I, I have Gracie Baja up the street. I mean, I'll go there this afternoon. I promise you, Brucey. Uh, but that was it. And I was actually in Vancouver when I got the call. And both of us being hockey guys, you will appreciate this. I was doing some Vancouver Canucks games as a freelancer at the time. And so my flight was from Vancouver right into Narita and right onto the Shinkansen, which seemed really simple as I was flying over to see bullet train. And then I came up and there wasn't a lot of English there. Somehow I got on the bullet train and I made my way to Shin Yokohama, Japan. But it was, it was all about Brucey and our relationship at ESPN and Brucey believing I could bring some energy and enthusiasm to the ultimate fighting championship way back when. And, and how many days or weeks before the event came this call? Uh, I would say, Three weeks, maybe okay. three weeks, two weeks. Um, That's not a lot of time. It was, it, 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 it wasn't a lot of time and I'll be the first to admit, and I know people will be like, well, he still doesn't know, but I'll be the first to say that it was a cram session. It was an absolute cram session in every form and fashion. I watched old tapes. I watched like UFC 15 Vitor. I watched Randy beat Vitor because my first title fight was Randy Couture and Maurice Smith. And that was when Randy won the belt in the heavyweight division for the first time. So it was a cram session, but it was also a ton of quality time when I got to Japan, Ariel, with Elaine McCarthy, who taught me immediately. She was the first person I saw from SEG. So away from Bruce in production. And she said, and I quote, R is H in Portugal (laughs) and Portuguese. So it's not it's not Royce of Toys. And of course, it's Elio Gracie. She told me about the the little man on the bottom and the guard and explained a bit to me. And then I met the Olympic gold medalist, Jeff Blatnick. Now we lose too many people way too soon. Yes. But Jeff and Big John, we were in a ballroom and they're talking to me about different things. And John lays on his back area and goes, come here, kid. I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. I just met. We're not dating. They're like, what's going on here? And he he showed me guard. He showed me half guard. He, He showed me just enough 
not to know too much. And of course, I leaned very heavily on Jeff during those many first shows, the same way I always did with Joe. I always understood my role and Joe's the expert. I, I was Summerall, Joe's Madden. And that was no different at the time for Jeff Blatnick. He definitely favored the wrestlers, if you remember back then, uh, for obvious reasons. And then we did the show. And uh, it, it was crazy. And, and who knew that my 100th UFC would be Randy and Brock and that this thing would turn into a global, a global phenomenon because that's what it became. Because way back when, that production truck was a milk truck and Brucey was on a stick mic. But somehow we made the show happen. And as you know, you go over to Japan and you get the Wimbledon yeah, clap. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. What's going on here? People are beating each other up. Um, but a day to be cherished. I'm I'm getting chills, and for for many many reasons, my emotions are all over the place today. But but obviously so. By the way, uh, at this point, I mean you're you're a veteran, ESPN, Canucks, all that stuff, Chicago. Are you kind of freaking out before? I mean, this is a brand new sport. You're in a foreign country. You haven't called it. Like, were you super super nervous before the call? Absolutely, one hundred percent. Because much to your point, I. I had made it to a really nice level in the mainstream world. Yeah. And I mean, I started doing the Detroit Red Wings. You know, with the, I did the Red Wings Stanley Cup season right in the same time frame as I went to Japan. Um, but it was Bruce Connell. And Bruce was someone I trusted. And I knew Bruce wouldn't put me in a situation that was too crazy. And for better or for worse, the distribution wasn't all that spectacular at right, the time. Right. Senator McCain was right. Um, so it wasn't going to blow through millions of households right away as I kind of learned and, and understood that it was renegade at the time, but that these were athletes that were going in there to compete. And so my, my learning curve was definitely a fast track. And guys like Randy Couture took me under their wing very quickly, accepted me. And uh, I mean, I'm forever thankful to Jeff Blatnick for the way he welcomed me, to the many others I had learned from, and more than anybody, John McCarthy, because John has been there throughout this entire ride. He's been a big brother. He's told me things, Ariel, that I didn't want to hear, but I needed to hear. And uh, I would not have been on the journey that I've been on if it weren't for Big John helping me, this newbie, to try to grow with this sport of mixed martial arts. It is a, a reminder of how, you know, the times have changed. Because could you imagine someone in 2022, you know, walking into a UFC broadcast for the first time in the social media age, people would roast yeah. him if they thought that he was a, you know, a, a, a poser. It didn't... might go as well as my NFL. <laughs> is, right? I, that, I can say I had a bad game. I should have, I should have stayed off social media. Uh, but you are absolutely right. right. So <laughs> that, uh, that would be a tough time to do it right now. Right. Absolutely. Um, as far as the event, it's, it's actually a, a very memorable event because of the Sakuraba, uh, controversy and then having to, to replay the match and the tournament middleweight title. What do you remember specifically about UFC 15 and a half ultimate Japan? Frank Shamrock's MMA debut, his UFC debut. Ken was already well established. He was the world's most dangerous man. And this guy, Frank Shamrock, was finally getting his moment. And his opponent was Olympic gold medalist, Kevin Jackson from Michigan State, a good Sparty. I'm an Ohio kid. So I'm okay with Sparties. It's those other guys uh -huh. that I don't talk about that I hope to get a rematch with, but that's another subject. And he armbarred Kevin Jackson in, I want to say, 18 or 19 seconds if, if we look back at it. That is the most memorable moment because I go in with an Olympic gold medalist in Jeff. You have Kevin Jackson, who is an Olympic gold medalist. I'm told that wrestling can dictate how the fight goes. And boom, here comes Frank Shamrock, who had great credentials at that time. But I only knew what they were worth to a certain degree because I was new. But I'll never forget how quickly that fight was over. And then I learned why that fight was over. Like, wait, wait, wait. what's you know, afterwards, what's a tap? What's a tap? Well, if he would have held on to it, Goldie, Big John telling me, he would have snapped his arm. I'm like, oh, okay. So it's not no Nomas or Roberto Duran. And they said, absolutely not. It's checkmate. And that's what it was. And it didn't take long for checkmate for Sh Frank Shamrock against uh, the Olympic gold medalist that day. That That's the one I remember the most. 
Um, when did you get the call that you'd be back for the next one? Like, I'm, I'm assuming when they called you for this first one, it was more like, hey, do you want to jump in here? But it wasn't like you signed a multi-year deal with them. When did right. you find out that you were being asked back? So one of the best things going back to my time struggling with, with Big John and being supervised by Jeff is Bob and Ellen Myrowitz, the owner, and of course, Bob's wife, walked by the ballroom that we were messing around in at the time, and he poked his head in. So he, he saw the new guy on the floor in this ballroom in the Palace Hotel in Shin Yokohama, Japan. And I'll never forget that vision. I looked at both John and Jeff, and I go, that, that's not a bad thing. The owner knows that I really want to learn, and I knew it would be good. I knew I would come back, and I knew that I was going to be my Rose guy. And it very much was that moment of them seeing how proactive I was already being to try to be the best I could to broadcast the UFC for SCG at the time. Mm. And uh, it was a, a run that lasted two decades. I see you're, yeah. you're, you're, you're rocking the gear. You still have the poster. It doesn't seem as though <laughs> uh, there's any ill feelings. Do you, are you still able to watch the sport? Are you still able to follow it? How do you feel about the sport and in particular the UFC? Um, blessed and much more appreciative than maybe I was at the time. And I say that because I know you and many others can relate when you're so darn busy and you're trying to learn and you're traveling and you're, you know, the next fight and the next fight and the next fight, you don't really step back. You're amongst those trees and you don't step back and you don't take that view at the forest. And so was I always honored, blessed and appreciative? Of course I was. But now I cherish it much more. I haven't had this jacket on in a while, but this jacket has always been right in its spot in my closet. I'm very proud of the time that I spent with the UFC. And that, and that took some time for me as a person and as a man to be able to reflect on the positives once the sting of the negatives and obviously the sale and, and then the non-renewal of my contract those go away over time and you have fans hit you at different times and places and fighters like the podcast i just did with sugar sean o'malley mm. where he asked me to call a fight i do and it, it pretty much goes viral and and he's loving me and i never called one of sean's fights he came to the ufc after i had departed i am so appreciative because there's so much in my life that i have experienced so much in my life that my family has experienced and so much in my life that i have today because of the ultimate fighting championship. And so it's, it's nothing but respect. It's nothing but well wishes and it's nothing but thankfulness, especially on a day like today. Did it take some time? Yeah. It, it took a little bit of time to get that sting away, but I was never, I, I was never unappreciative. I was just hurt. I was hurt. And I was saddened by the fact that I had such a great gig with great people and that I no longer was able to do it. I understand recently you actually bumped into Dana White in Las Vegas. Yeah. Can you tell us about that? That was, that was a little while back. It, it was kind of crazy because I, it, I would like to run that one back because the whole, did Dana say anything? And I mean, it was an awkward situation. Craig Borsari was wonderful. The hugs, the tears, everything was there. I should have been the guy to be proactive and walk up and thank Dana as I look back at it. I should, I should have done that. I, I should have said, Dana, thank you because business is business. And when I saw Dana about, I want to say probably about a year and a half later. So this was after my departure, we were in Las Vegas. My son had a hockey tournament. I was coaching. We were staying at Red Rock, still using those Fertitta uh -huh. connections, of course. Uh -huh. And I walk out and I see Dana in the valet area with a couple of buddies and he's, he's getting into his car. He's leaving probably after a dinner or, or a little bit of gambling as we know with, uh, with the UFC president, Dana White. And my son Cole looks at me, he goes, dad, that's Dana. And honestly, Ariel, I froze. I, I did not know what to do. do. Do I say hello? Do I nod? I, what do I do? And I'm usually a guy much like yourself, who's got a pretty good instinct. And my son, God bless him. He's like, dad, go say hi. And I did, and I shook his hand, and I said, thank you for everything. I said, I hope we can stay in touch, and I, I wish you nothing 
but the ultimate in success in everything that continues in the UFC. And I'll always be thankful for it. So it was, it was a great moment of, I guess, closure at the time because of the way that the ending went. And, you know, like I said, I should have been the one to think Dana and not waited and then have a little bit of negative come out of it because Dana White was great to me. He was great to me. He was supportive of me. He was the one who called me when I was going to go to the WWE and said, don't go. We want you. We got you. Lorenzo is the man. I mean, I was Lorenzo Fertitta's guy. There's no question. But it was it was a good moment. And I'm really glad that I walked up to Dana that night or that day in front of the Red Rock. And I'd be kicking myself, Ariel, if mm. I wouldn't have. I'm, I'm glad I did because it turned out well. But was there a little fear and trepidation? Absolutely. Actually, the first thing he did say is, what the F are you doing here? Uh, but he meant, like, why are you in town? Sure, 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 <laughs> of sure. Of course, sure. With, the Dana, with Dana, you can take that a lot of different yeah, yeah, ways, yeah. right? <laughs> so do you still follow? Do you still watch uh, the organization, the sport? Are you still, you know, keeping up to date with things? Absolutely. MMA will always be special to me. MMA is what I'm known for. Um, but make that combat sport and the athletes that continue to take the sport to where it is today, not just on the UFC platform, on every platform, because my five years at Bellator was absolutely tremendous. And I have a chance to sit next to Big John and have him be my broadcast partner it was truly a, a, a full circle. I was one of the guys who was part of the roast at Big John's 50th birthday. I mean, we were always very, very close. I, Ron McCarthy, obviously, judges all the time, does a tremendous job. I went to Ron's high school football games with John and Elaine. So to be able to come full circle and do that, I'll always appreciate the athletes and always appreciate those who were part of my family and always the fans. Because the fans remind me um, at various times that I did okay. I did okay. And they enjoyed what I did and they appreciate it. And yeah, can I watch every single show now? No, I don't think anybody can <laughs> humanly watch every single show out there right now. But it, do I turn it off on purpose? Never, yeah. never. It's a, it's a great sport. My friends are still part of it, Ariel. And um, I love the fighters. I, I love the fighters. And I, and I think about those fighters and what they've said to me over the years. And I watch the next breed. And hey, Sean O'Malley's call to come to his podcast and and then reaction to that video just reminds me that you know what a lot of the fighters still appreciate what i've done as well oh uh, i'm so happy to hear that um I, I would hate to hear that there's you know you're you're a human being you're allowed to have feelings you're allowed to have emotions you're allowed to have pride ego all those things but to live with the resentment after all the great things that you did for this sport that you were the soundtrack for this sport some of the greatest moments in the history of sport you. You. you know, you're the voice that's attached to it. They can't play those moments without you being involved. And you're part of the reason why so many people got into it. And 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 for the longest time, new fans might not remember this or not might be surprised to hear this. There was only one play-by-play -play guy. There wasn't three right. or four. Yeah. It was just you at every single event. Uh, you and Joe for the longest time. So you're you're a huge part of the history. I, I go on and on, and, and you don't even have to comment on this. I just feel like the history of the sport needs to be celebrated more. You know, the 30th anniversary is coming up in November. Um, and I would love if they did something like the NBA did last All-Star Game where they brought out the 75 greatest for the 75th anniversary. Why don't we name the 30 greatest in the UFC's history and bring back, let all the 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 grudges go away for one night. Just bring back everyone who's around. Wouldn't that be great to celebrate the people who made the sport what it is today, the organization what it is today? I would love to see that. Um, and I'm sure you would echo those sentiments and I think it would be a great thing. Yeah. But the good thing is you're still calling fights. Uh, you're calling BYB extreme, right? That's that's bare knuckle yep. fighting, correct? Bare knuckle fighting, yep. And then Pro Box TV with uh, Roy Jones Jr. this past year. I mean, you want to talk about the best of the best. They got to work with Superman. And my partner on both BYB and on Pro Box is Paulie Malinaji. And um, Paulie <laughs> reminds me a lot of working with Joe, Ariel. And it, I think if people know Paulie's personality and they know Joe's personality, you can understand exactly why I say that. And the one thing, you know, there's many traits that they have, the enthusiasm and, and the, the look and the energy. But the one thing that is consistent with both of them is they're the best at what they do in their sport. 
To me, Paulie is the best at what he does in boxing, and Joe will always be the best at what he does in MMA. And to be able to learn this past year and, and really embrace the sport of boxing, coming into a new form of combat sports, to have Paulie next to me, Ariel, has, has been tremendous. To just real quickly go back to your point about the 30-year anniversary and the celebration. I, I was reading your post, and I, and I saw that, and I was thinking about it. And you and I had texted last week, and congratulations. And shortly thereafter, you texted me, Goldie, do you want to come on today and, and talk about this? And I mean, it, 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 it rattled me in the most positive way that any human being can be, let's just say, embraced. Like my guy, Ariel, still loves me. He always had me. He appreciates what I've done. And I think we should appreciate it, everybody. And I agree with you. Let the grudges go away. Let's just have an open forum of who has helped make this sport so special. Get all the politics away and let's name the 30 greatest. And hey, maybe they'll they'll have my voice on one or two of those fights. Oh, man. Some of those 30 guys, I called many of their Yes, fights. more than one or two. Um, more do, than one. Do, do you have any desire to call MMA? Like you, you're, you're very busy. You're doing bare knuckle. You're doing boxing. But is there a part of you that would like to still call MMA? Does that matter to you? Yeah, it, it does matter because if I am able to be placed in the right situation in the sport of MMA, I'll attack it with the same vibrance, energy, and enthusiasm, and do my homework like always. You know me and my prep. I mean, I redefine OCD. They're big capitals I, in a heartbeat, in a heartbeat. And that's why I enjoyed my time at Bellator so much because there really was so much crossover. I mean, Douglas Lima, Diego, Chinzo Machida. Obviously, Leoto, Vader's over there. Obviously, Rumble came for the one, and now I'm getting chills thinking about Anthony. But Mitrio, Nelson, it, it, it was the same in a lot of ways other than don't say Joe and don't say Octagon. Uh, yeah. You know, Jimmy, Jimmy, that first show, I asked Jimmy Smith, I said, Did I call you Joe? He said, ah, nah, a dozen or two times. Don't worry about it. I go, okay. Then I say Octagon. He said, once. All right, all right. Yes, of course I would. And, a, you know, it's a crazy world, and I respect so much what they're doing at the UFC today. But if for some reason, somewhere, somehow, I got a call from them again, would would I be on the first flight and go back in a heartbeat to be with friends and family that I was with for 19 years? Without a doubt. Without a doubt. And, and if that doesn't happen, I'm just saying, you yeah. asked if I would go back, I would go back in a heartbeat. And, and if that doesn't occur... That's okay too. I understand the business, but man, I'll tell you what, I would be better than I was in those 19 years being able to step back as I've been able to do in the last five or six years and take it all in. I, I would be better. And I think there were areas in which I improved when I went to Bellator because it, I had a minute to take a deep breath. Mm and say, and look in the mirror and go, I, I can get mad at everybody else, or I can look in the mirror and be a better man myself. And that's what I've chosen to do. And I'm attacking boxing the same way. And, um, you know, I, you and I've talked about it, your success and your crossover and you work in the boxing. It, it just, it makes me smile every time I see you because I feel like, Hey, I'm going to join my buddy Ariel on this, on this boxing thing uh -huh. real soon. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, so far so good. And, and who knows what could open up maybe my next journey is as a lead commentator for the sweet science in some form or fashion. I love it. Um, you mentioned Anthony Rumble Johnson, still shocked of his passing. And I remember him calling you out, mentioning you, uh, that, that, that took, that took some guts that took some balls to do that, yeah. you know? Um, and so can I, can I just ask, you know, how, how you're dealing with that? And, and, and when you found out about it, did you know that he was that sick? I knew that he was very sick. I did not know that he was that sick. Okay. We were constantly in touch via text. When Desmond Green made his BYB debut, it was in Miami. And Jason Jackson, and I mean, a bunch of the guys were, were in the stands. And I asked Rumble, he's right there. I go, Anthony, AJ, you coming to the show? He's like, well, you know, I'm dealing with some health stuff. And this is three years ago, Ariel. Uh, but I'll see you soon. I'll see you soon. And then, hey, how you doing, bud? I'm good. I'm good. And he never got into the details of what he was dealing with. 
but I knew it was very, very serious. But I only knew that it was serious to the point of he couldn't fight and compete. I didn't know the fight for life was going to end for Anthony Johnson. And I, you know, I wish there was something that I could have done, but I'm not a doctor. Um, but I know that I said the things that I wanted to say to him in the time before he left us. And that was really important to me because you know what, man, that did take a ton of freaking balls for him to do what he did mm. at that UFC aerial and, and not be scolded by the management there. And I remember I was laying on the couch watching that show and he goes, and one more thing. And I just froze. And then when it was me, I was like, there's no way there, there's no way he just did that. And that encapsulizes everything about fans, fighters, friends like yourself that will be in my heart, my soul forever. But that moment right there tells me I did it right. Tells me I did it right. And um, man, when I, when I heard of his passing, I was in shock and disbelief. We did, we did a tribute that I wrote, of course, uh, at the BYB Extreme that I was broadcasting shortly thereafter. And we were getting close to it because we were set to do it before the main event. And um, I, I started to get quiet on the air. And Paulie knew it was up. Benny Ricardo knew it was up. And then Fernanda, you know, my better half, Nanda came over. I texted her. I said, can you come over here, please? And she put her hand on my shoulder as I read that tribute to AJ. And um, that tribute and the one I had to do for Bruce were the two toughest things I've ever done on TV because of how much both of them meant to me. I wouldn't be where I am today if it weren't for Bruce Connell. Not even close at so many levels, Ariel. But doing that tribute to AJ was, was tough. You just want to get it right. You just want to get it right. And thankfully, I did. And uh, I love that dude, man. He was two people, as you well know. There was Rumble and there was AJ. And uh, I was very blessed. To call him my friend and for him to call me his friend you're the man mike uh happy anniversary you, so great to have you on so great to connect uh so great to see you doing well uh at peace uh in a good spot professionally and personally i wish you the best this holiday season in 2023 keep on doing your thing my man you know a lot of people still remember you still love you, you texted me if you still remember me and you still of course i will never forget you <laughs> you, knew, you, you knew i was i, was I know kidding, i know kidding not kidding not kidding because i had seen you at Jake i know i know but, but of course i will never yeah. forget all the things you've done for me and and, and and uh falling in love with the sport because of your cause as someone who looked up to broadcasters and tried to emulate broadcasters you were the ufc guy you were the only mma guy for a very long time here in uh in north america so i hope you know that a lot of people have your back and love you you are at the top of that list. You remember us playing trivia with Zach Candido in Mexico City? Yes, absolutely. Yes. <laughs> that was fun. What's his nickname? What's this? What's that? I got it. I got yes. it. And highs and lows. You've always been there. And, and I mean this sincerely. You having me on your show today because I consider you the best at what you do. And your platform has grown because of your hard work and your commitment. And I've told you many times, so this isn't coming out of left field, how proud I am for you, of you, and how happy I am to see your success. And for you to say, Goldie, do you want to come on the show and talk about it today? I'll save that text as well. So thank you for everything that you've done for me and for the sport. And may our journeys become very close together. Let's get on some gigs together moving forward. Only the broadcast gods know for mm -hmm. sure. But the more time I get to spend with you, the better, because you are a, a, a world-class human being who is loyal to almost to a fault, I suppose, when you look at where you and I have gotten our hands slapped at times. Uh, but I love you, brother. And um, I thank you so much for having me on. Today. Thank you, Mike. Appreciate that very much. All the best. Talk to you soon. See you, bud. All right, there he is, the great Mike Goldberg, longtime voice of the UFC. Happy anniversary to him. 25 years.